Greetings to you in the name of the creator of the whole universe, our God, Yahweh, my friend. I come to you today to some of the creeping compromises into Christianity. Actually, I'm going to center on Christmas or celebration of Christmas. Amongst Christians, and particularly amongst Seventh-day Adventist Christians, is it biblical? Why hasn't the church actually made it a day to be honored or a day of worship? Why is it that all other Christians or many other Christians do go to church on the 25th of December and celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, but Seventh-day Adventists do not do that? Why? When I came to believe Christ, when I accepted the teachings of the church to be baptized, we were taught so many things. And I'm going to share some of these things with you. Then our discussion will continue. I will share my view vis-a-vis -vis the word of God, that is the Bible, because we are told that we are not just following cunningly devised stories. Peter tells us we are not following cunningly devised stories, but the true word of God, the written word of God. And actually, Protestant Christians say, sola scriptura, sola scriptura, the Bible and the Bible only. Then we ask, is Christmas biblical? Is it a Bible injunction? Did Jesus Christ tell us to celebrate his birthday or his death and resurrection and preach his second coming which one friends actually i feel very sad when i look at the way things are going on amongst christians and particularly in god's church whenever it comes to the so-called end of the year which even the bible doesn't endorse as December being the end of the year. Where in the Bible do we see December being the 12th month? Where in the Bible do we see January being the first month of the year? Can anybody show me? January, according to the Bible, is not the first month of the year. So even when it comes to the end of the year, as we are saying, according to man-made rules and regulations, leaving that of the creator, Yahweh, the king of the whole universe, the creator of the whole universe, the ruler of the whole universe, the supreme commander of the whole universe, leaving his commandments and following men's commandments. You see people starting these carols nights. What is it for? Is it not in honor of Christmas? Then when it comes to the Christmas day, you go to church, you see Christians, pastors, elders greeting each other, sometimes Merry Christmas and so on. It is said that he who is not to be beaten is not to be pushed. In my local language, it says, A food, food that is not to be eaten, we should not dip our hand into it. So if we have seen that Christmas is not a biblical command and that it is not anything that Christians should join themselves to, then why the carol nights? Then why the greetings and all these things? When we could have greeted Happy Sabbath and many other good greetings that the Lord has given us. Friends, we must beware. True Christians must beware. Christ has told us, it is not all who call me Lord, Lord are mine. We know that. So true Christians must beware. I sat down and prayed about this. I've been very sad about these things and actually I don't know what to do. I am confused now. Okay, because Christ Jesus, the one who died on the cross to save us, the son of the living God, told us, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, it is my commandments that you are supposed to keep. In John chapter 14, verse 15, is Christmas a commandment from our Lord? The Lord has given us a certain commandment. 
something that we must celebrate and keep, and that is his death and resurrection and the Last Supper. Why don't we even eulogize that? When that one is coming, see the preparations that the church does towards that. And then see the preparations that we have been doing towards Christmas. Which one are we honoring? Are we honoring the Lord? We know that Christmas is man-made. It is cunningly devised stories. And uh, it was a day of a certain God and uh, they, they believed in Christ. So they have changed it and using it for Christ, even though it is not the birthday of Christ. And uh, there was uh, Santa Claus who was giving gifts here and there and moving about. All these are stories, cunningly devised stories. Are true Christians supposed to be following cunningly devised stories? When I looked at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 25, what I saw was that Christ has commanded us to remember his death and resurrection and also to preach his second coming. Are we very busy about this? Are we doing it? Do we love him? He says, if you love me, keep my commandment. By his grace, I have been an elder in the Seventh-day Adventist church. I was ordained as an elder in the year 2001 and have never sat down. I have gone through the scriptures. I have read all other Christian books that teach us about the truth to confirm like the Berean Christians whether what I have been taught is true. And I have seen that the teachings that I was given at the baptismal class is true. And that is what we must follow, friends. Friends, I remember in the year 1992, 1993, I was in the baptismal class as a new believer who had accepted the Seventh-day Adventist teaching and we were being taught about the Bible, or we were being prepared for baptism. We learned so many good things that were scriptural. And among the things that we learned were that Christmas is a pagan institution and it is unbiblical. And that God has raised or exalted his word above his name. Psalm 138 verse 2. God has raised his word above his name. So anything that is inimical to the word of God or that is not spelled out by the word of God, we should shun it and we should not follow it. I love this teaching that my baptismal class teachers gave me. Glory be to God. I can remember Mrs. Vida Mensa, who was very keen and serious teaching us. She is now late. Christ will raise her once again when he returns in the second time according to his promise because she lived by the truth. There was a time that I remember I was very worried about this Christmas thing. I went to her, she sat me down and told me that don't worry follow the Bible, don't follow anybody. It is Christ that we are following. We are not following people. Glory be to God. Friends, we were taught that Christmas is a pagan institution. It is unbiblical in the baptismal class in the Sunday Adventist church. I want to ask a question. If it is not the word of God, and the word of God is so powerful that he has raised it even higher than his own name, which is above all names. Then where from this now? We were charged to make the word of God, Yahweh, our only source of spiritual growth. I remember in the baptismal class, we were given Bible verses like 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23. And I was very keen about it. I was a keen student. I would always, I still have my notes there. And I have tried to pen a few things out of that. 
Back in 1993, 1992, we were taught these things. That is why I accepted the Seventh-day Adventist faith because I learned that everything that they were teaching was based on the Bible. It was biblical. Anything that is not in the Bible, they told us, according to the Word of God, is cunningly divides stories. And therefore, we should shun them. We were given verses like 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. And we were told that we should desire the pure milk of the word of God only. The pure milk of the word of God by which we will spiritually grow. So I underlined the word pure and I want to follow only such things that are pure. Every teaching must be purely coming from the Word of God. We are not Seventh-day Adventists for nothing. Learn about our history and you will know where we are coming from. We are true Protestants. Protestants did not initially accept this Christmas thing. And Seventh-day Adventists are true soldiers of Christ who fought against these things. I am told that now even the General Conference mounts Christmas trees. I don't want to go and look at it. I don't want to see it. But if it is true that that is going on there as the headquarters of God's true church, then it means that somebody wants to give us adulterated milk. Let us be careful. Because after all, we say the Bible and the Bible only. All our Sabbath schools, uh, Sabbath school quarterlies have been taunting this. The last two quarters last year were all taunting Sola Scriptura. Remember. At the baptismal class, I remember we were taught that Christmas is a pagan institution. Sunday is a spurious Sabbath. And remember, I remember that was the time, the first time I think I heard about the word spurious. And I was so happy about it. And our Sabbath school class, um, I mean, baptismal class teachers explained these things thoroughly to us. Young saplings that were growing to become trees. In the church of christ we were taught this we were also taught that child baptism is unbiblical and it is coming from somewhere somebody who is an antichrist somebody who does not love christ someone who doesn't follow the teachings of christ all this while i thought that it would even be good yes since baptism is to wash away our sins was to be saved, then it would be very nice if the children are baptized because if you are baptized early, it helps a lot. But we were told and we were given Bible verses like Matthew chapter um, 28 verses 18 to 20 that one must be mature enough who will be able to sift through and know what is good and what is bad? Who should be able to listen to the word of God and analyze and decide for him or herself that they will accept Christ Jesus before they are baptized? In fact, I have confirmed consistently all these things through the scriptures since that time. And by God's grace, I have seen that is the truth. The truth is constant. Second Peter chapter 2, verses 21 and 22 says, For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. Verse 22, listen, is serious. Verse 22 says, But it has happened to them, 
according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit, and a soul, having washed to her wallowing in the mire, having washed to her wallowing in the mire. And so I think that's a pig. Having been washed, going back to wallow in the mire. The Bible says it would be better for us not to have seen the truth, the way of righteousness, than to see it and go back on it. May God forgive his church. May God bring his church back to the thoughts of Christ. The Bible calls on us to let the thoughts of Christ fail us in the book of Romans. We have always been taught that we must be Christians who are like the Berean Christians who would always search the scriptures. And according to Acts chapter 17 verse 11, the Bible reads, these were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. You see, whether these things were so. The things that we are being taught, how we are being gradually invited to accept this Christmas creeping compromise in the church. Are you taking your scriptures, the sword of the word, the Bible, and the Bible only? Are you measuring and checking it with the Bible? Do you see anything in the word of God that calls on us to join ourselves with the world in celebrating Christmas? Friends, Martin Luther said, here I stand. I cannot do other. We have to continue to be like the Berean Christians. No matter who teaches it, if it is not Christ's command, it is jekyll and we should shun it. I saw this when I was praying about it, and uh, like inspiration, I wrote it. Christians like Daniel, true Christians like Daniel, we should purpose in our hearts never to defile ourselves with the king's table. Yes, our adversary Satan is a king. Jesus called him the king. Of this world. He is inviting us as Nebuchadnezzar invited Daniel and his friends to his table that seemed so wonderful and so nice. Yes, sometimes when we remember in our childhood when we had not seen the truth, how we celebrated it, singing, dancing, moving from one house to another, begging for food here and there, biscuits, and we were given, and we were so happy. It's inviting. When you look at the way all your friends and family members are engaged in it, cooking the best of meals. But remember Numbers chapter 25, when Israelites joined themselves to the Moabites to celebrate their gods and to have illicit sex, what God did to them. And how many people died. If we are the Israel of today, then we must be careful. Seventh-day Adventists. Otherwise, God can choose to reject us and to kill us. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And all through the Bible, particularly about the last quarter Sabbath school, tells us God does not joke with his word. His word is his word. And he expects us to obey. After all, isn't he the supreme commander of the whole universe? Ask the soldiers and those in the army whether if your commander commands, 
you can do otherwise. Friends, let's be careful. The table is inviting, but like Daniel and his friends, let's reject it. Outright rejection of this Christmas thing that is creeping into the Seventh-day Adventist church. It is unbiblical. When you read Revelation chapter 17, it talks about uh, the woman sitting on the scarlet beasts with seven heads, holding a cup. And we are taught in the Seventh-day Adventist church that that cup contains something and the contents are the doctrines of the Antichrist. Where does Christmas come from? Is it not coming from the same cup that is held by that devilish woman sitting on the scarlet beast? Read Revelation chapter 17 and see. Within the cup were doctrines that were not according to the word of God. And I want to tell you that Christmas as a, a Christian celebration that we know to it today is coming from the same cup. Out of the same cup came baptism of children. And out of the same cup came the veneration of Mary. Out of the same cup came the worship of the dead. And out of the same cup comes a lot of untruth. And out of the same cup comes Sunday worship. Christians beware. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 says, beware. Let no man deceive you. And this is very, very important. There is something that I came across as I was studying that Charles Spurgeon, the renowned Protestant preacher, said, those who follow the custom of observing Christmas follow not the Bible, but pagan ceremonies. You can check and you will see that it's a quote from Charles Spurgeon. We know that he was a true protest Protestant. This is what he said. Friends, the Bible warned us. Some people are saying, yes, it used to be a day uh, for worshipping um, idols, but now it has been changed and it has been hallowed into worshipping Christ. Listen, God does not want things taken from idolatry to come into his house. He wants the Israelites seriously against this. Listen to some Bible verses here. Now, the Bible tells us that the way we should worship God should be the way that he himself has prescribed. That is what God wants. That's why you can't take any day and say you are worshiping God on that day. After he has prescribed the seventh day for you as a holy day and a day in which you have to worship him. Exodus chapter 23 verse 13 says, We must pay close attention to everything that God has said to us. Close attention. We must not invoke the name of their gods. They must not be heard on our lips. They must not be heard even on our lips. Listen, the God whom Ellen White worshipped. Verse 24 of Exodus 23 says, You must not bow down to their gods or serve them, or serve them, or follow their practices. Christmas was being practiced thousands of years even before Christ was born by the Greeks and the Romans and the other nations. And that's why God warned them, the Israelites, not to follow it because it is inviting. It seems attractive. The Bible tells us 
in Exodus 23 verse 24, it says, You must not bow down to their gods or serve them or follow their practices. Instead, you are to demolish them and smash their sacred stones or pieces. God doesn't say, go and worship it. Why didn't he tell the Israelites that, go and wash it, sanctify it, and use it to worship me? So you cannot sanctify the pagans' date of birth, the, a God who is in direct opposition to Yahweh's date of birth, and say that now it has been Christianized. There is nothing like Christianization. You cannot say you have Christianized an image and change his name from Zios to Joseph or to Christ, and therefore we must come and bow to it. Some of the Adventists, will you do that? If you will not, then why the Christmas tree? Then why the Carol's Nights? Then why the 31st? It's December, the last month of the year, according to the Bible. Sola Scriptura. Awake. O oh, Church of God. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 25. God says, you must burn up the images of their gods. When you go to the land, burn up the images of their gods. He did not say, remove them into something, take the gold and the, and the service in it and use it to worship me. God hates that. He does not even like it. Listen. He says, you must burn the images of their gods. Do not covet their silver or gold. That is on them. Or take it for yourself. Okay? Or take it for yourself. Otherwise, you will be ensnared by it. You will be ensnared by it. For it is detestable to the Lord your God. Listen. So if you say, yes, it used to be a, a day for celebrating a God, Satan or Semiramis or Nimrod or whatever, but now it has been Christianized, you are not speaking according to the truth. You are not speaking according to the light. In Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20 tells us, if they speak not according to the word, it means there is no light in them. Should I go back on this after I have been, I have been taught all these things? <sighs> Never. God forbid. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 4 says, you, you shall not worship the Lord your God in this way of Christianizing idols and calling them by holy names and saying that we should bow to them. We shall not. Christmas is worldly. Let's listen to God. First John chapter 2 verses 15 to 16 says, The world and all its goodies are passing away. And it is only those who abide by the word of God shall continue to live. Dear friends, this Christmas idol is a serious thing that we must shun. After all, they all say it. They have not been able to hide the truth that the 25th December is not the birthday of Christ Jesus. But whose birthday is it? When you go into history, you will see that it was the birthday of Nimrod who married his mother and then after his death, the mother claimed that he came back and impregnated her. And so he gave birth to a child who was named Semiramis. And so they became great gods that people have been worshipping throughout history. Long time. Sometimes the way they do and decorate things. This Christmas tree decoration that they are doing. The mother was saying that he found the spirit of the son who had died or the husband, the, the husband who had died, bringing gifts and placing them under a tree or a shrub and so on and so forth. That is where the history comes from. 
sometimes the people of God were attracted to this kind of custom because it is attractive, looking at all the things that surround it. And God warned his people in the book of Jeremiah, <coughs> chapter 10, verses 1 to 4. God told them not to follow them. These decorations that they have been doing, decorating it with gold and silver. Look, read the book of Jeremiah. You see God mentioning the tree, mentioning the gold and the silver with which they decorate it. It is not from God. It is paganism. <laughs> Friends, we all know about this. Today, information abounds. Go and Google the origin of Christmas and you will see what will come. Read two or three. Watch two or three videos and you shall see that the Bible is the only truth that we have. Now, those of us Seventh-day Adventists who hide behind Spirit of Prophecy, <clears throat> who hide behind Ellen G. White's writings and celebrate Christmas and Mount Christmas trees without any shame in their eyes, listen, when you take the book, The Adventist Home, I think when I turn it like this, to do The Adventist Home, the book, The Adventist Home, and you turn to page 477 of the Adventist home. It is chapter 77. Chapter 77 and page 477. Let me read it to our hearing. Let us all listen to what Ellen White wrote. And then let's compare it to the truth to the Bible because Ellen White recommends the Bible as the bigger light and her writings as the lesser light. So the Bible overshadows her writings even though she had a lot of revelations from God. And now those of us who have been hiding behind her writings and are saying that Ellen White is saying that we can mount Christmas trees, we can celebrate Christmas with our children and we don't have to let the children go out and so on and so forth. Remember that the Bible has told us to teach our children the word of God. If we are teaching our children the true word of God, the true milk as said in 2 Peter, they will never desire the adulterated milk. Are we teaching our children the truth? There are other churches like the Jehovah Witnesses. Many of them are my friends. Their children will never desire, even if you give them a gift and you tell them it is a Christmas gift or with, even within that period, they will throw it away. If they respect you very, very much and they collect it, they will later throw it away. They will never come near. Why are their children able to shun it? And we some Adventists are saying that in order not for our children to see that we are bad people, we have to do this and do that. We don't have to. Are their children seeing their parents as bad? No, they love them. They support them. <coughs> They don't do these things. We are not serious. Indeed, the book of Revelation chapter um, 1, um, chapter 3, when you read about the churches, we are the Laodicean church, and the Laodicean church is not straightforward. It is always lukewarm, 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 lukewarm. And that exactly is how we some the Adventists are. But the Bible has warned us that if we don't change from that attitude, we'll be vomited out of the mouth of God. For the sake of time, let me read. This is what Ellen White wrote in the book Adventist Home, chapter 77, page 477. She says, the, the subheading is, Christmas, a holiday. And I love that. She says, a holiday. She didn't say a holy day. Holiday is different from holy day. The Sabbath, for instance, is a holy day, H-O-L-Y. But we have H-O-L-I, holy day, just any day instituted by human beings. And this is how she captions it. She doesn't caption it, Christmas, a holy day. She captions it, Christmas, a holy day. Listen and take a lot of sense from this. Let the Lord open your eyes. She writes, Christmas is coming, is the note that is sounded throughout our world. 
from east to the west and from north to the south. With youth, those of mature age and even the aged, it is a period of general rejoicing, of great gladness. But what is Christmas? That it should demand so much attention. This is Ellen White speaking. Think about it. Let's continue. She says, The 25th December is supposed to be the day of the birth of Jesus Christ, and his observance has become customary and popular. But yet, there is no certainty that we are keeping the veritable day of our Savior's birth. This is what Ellen White is saying. There is no certainty. And remember, the Bible has told us that we are not following cunningly devised stories. Friends, let's wake up. She continues. History gives us no certain assurance of this. Ellen White speaking. She continues. The Bible does not give us the precise time. Had the Lord, listen to this attentively, had the Lord deemed this knowledge essential to our salvation, he would have spoken through his prophets and apostles, and we might know all about the matter. This is Ellen White speaking. She's saying that the Lord had not deemed this necessary, and that is why he did not speak to any of his prophets, nor through any of the apostles concerning this matter of Christmas. An idol, a complete idol. Remember, God has warned us, in Exodus chapter 20, that you shall never make any image. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. Okay, let's continue to listen to Ellen White. But the silence of the scriptures upon this point evidences to us that it is hidden from us for the wisest purpose. Friends, this is what Ellen White, behind whom people are hiding and celebrating Christmas, is saying. It is hidden from us for the wisest purpose. Please. Any educated person who has learned English, which we are using now as the lingua franca, knows that we have inadjectives, positive, comparative, and superlative. And Ellen White has used the superlative. He says, for the wisest reason. Friends, we have wise, wiser, and wisest. Beside wisest, what else? God's wisest wisdom, besides God's wisest wisdom, what else do you have? Is it not fully? Is it not fully? Friends, let's be careful. Besides the omnipotence wisest reason, and this is what she is saying, that it is hidden from us for the wisest purposes. What else? The rest is fully. The rest is fully. Okay, she continues to speak. In his wisdom, the Lord conceals the place where the bury, where he buried Moses. I thank God. Just a recently ended Sabbath school, just last week, told us a lot about Moses, his death and his burial. So we understand this. He says, in his wisdom, the Lord concealed the place where he buried Moses. God buried him and God resurrected him and took him to heaven. This secrecy was to prevent idolatry. That is why, as a child of God, I tell you, Christmas is an idol. She says, God did this to prevent idolatry. She continues. He against whom they rebelled while he was in active service, 
whom they provoked almost beyond human endurance, was almost worshipped as a god after his separation from them by death. Okay? Moses. For the very same purpose, this is Ellen White speaking, for the very same purpose, he has concealed the precise day of Christ's birth that the day should not receive the honor that should be given to Christ as the Redeemer of the world. One to be received, to be trusted, to be relied on as he who could save to the uttermost all who come unto him. The soul's adoration should be given to Jesus as the Son of the infinite God. Hallelujah. This is what Ellen White has said about Christmas from the book, The Adventist Home. What are you doing in your homes? To the extent that now it is being brought into the church. But that is not what we were taught. Let's remember, God has told us never to break agreements. Never to change borders. Arbitrarily. And this is arbitrary change of borders. Because the scripture doesn't support it. If this is what we were taught and we believed and we were baptized. And now you are doing otherwise. Know that you are being untruthful. And it is sin. You can continue to read. There are other subtopics such as the day not to be ignored. Read on it, you will see. The interchange of gifts as token of affection. Other subtopics. For the sake of time, I may not be able to read everything under there. Then we have books for children are recommended. And then we have Jesus not to be forgotten. Then we have Christmas, a time to honor God. And then you have 10 thoughts of the children into a new channel. I have read through all these. And apart from the first page and what I read, all the things that I read under these subtopics truly do not sound like Ellen White. Especially when you come to where they talk about Christmas trees. It looks as if she is saying that you can mount the Christmas tree and place some gifts under it. I don't think, I don't think Ellen White will write this. After she has said this, oh, the woman who wrote the great controversy, have you read it? The great controversy between Christ and Satan who encourage anybody to celebrate Christmas among Christmas trees. She is not a confused person. The woman who wrote Patriots and Prophets, hallelujah. She would never condone Christmas an idol. Something that she has said that God in his wisest wisdom has hidden it from mankind and you can see it is true. There are various dates that are even older, older than the birth of Christ that are remembered. People know it vividly well. But only the birth of Christ is hidden from all the wisest people and nobody knows it. Philosophers and think about the wisest people that you, you can think of in the world. Nobody has been able to see it. Something that God has buried. You go and unbury it and bring it out. It has bad scent. The creator in his wisest wisdom. Anything besides the creator's wisest wisdom. That's why I'm saying that what you see in this book. That is said to be the continuation of what I read. As something that Ellen White wrote. Doesn't sound like her voice. And she would never contradict herself. And she would never contradict the Bible. Because after all, in my baptismal class, Pastor Hammond was teaching that class. I remember that was 1993. He demonstrated to us that when Ellen White was about to die, 
she raised the Bible. And as old as she was, I think about 83 or so, her hands were shaking. And she recommended to the people and said, Brethren, I recommend to you this book. Holding the Bible in her hand. And her hands were shaking because of old age. And she said, I recommend to you this book. Above all that I have written, it is the greater light. What I have written is the lesser light. Follow the greater light. The Bible and the Bible only. God bless you as you seek the truth and try to follow Christ and not humans. Glory be to God.